spirally loaded to copper tape and PVC dipole. This easy to build 2 meter band vertical dipole is only 40% as tall as a J-pole. Here is a simple starter antenna, especially for a new ham, that offers good performance and would be a good radio club build-it-yourself project. It's stealthy and low visibility to neighbors and homeowners associations. It's also a good temporary base station antenna for net control at parades and marathons. Not many hardware store do-it-yourself materials are more attractive to homebrew hams than PVC pipe and copper. This little gem is an 18 inch tall corkscrew of one inch adhesive back to copper foil tape wrapped spirally around a three foot length of one and one fourth inch PVC pipe. The tape is available at many hardware stores. Equally suitable adhesive copper tape used for RF shielding is also available from online suppliers. Be sure to purchase it in a one inch width. The entire antenna length is just a stretched out loading coil, a helix of one inch by 1.5 mil copper. The wide tape has low resistance, which is important in a small antenna. Aluminum tape can also be used, although you should select a slightly thicker gauge the one inch wide turns are separated by a further one inch to minimize losses common in loading coils. The result is an antenna with better than 90% efficiency. Our barber pole antenna is vertically polarized and omnidirectional towards the horizon with a maximum gain of 1.64 dBi. In comparison, the much taller 5-foot copper pipe J-pole has essentially the same radiation pattern and only a half decibel more gain. Figure 2 shows the SWR and bandwidth at 2 meters plotted with a Rig Expert A1400 antenna analyzer. The wide copper tape contributes significantly to the bandwidth shown. Excellent SWR of less than 1.5 to 1 across the entire band. Cost. I purchased a 45 foot roll of 1 inch by 1.5 mil copper RF shielding tape from Amazon for $10.99. Only 5 feet are needed but the remaining tape is useful for other radio projects. A 10 foot length of one and one fourth inch PVC pipe is roughly $20. Some stores sell shorter lengths. This antenna requires three feet of pipe. 
six feet of mini RG8 on the internet costs $1.20 at 20 cents a foot. A PL239 connector is about $2 to $4. Considering only the fraction of materials used, this antenna has a modest price tag of about $10. Construction. Begin with a 36 inch length of 1 and 1 fourth inch Schedule 40 PVC pipe. Schedule 80 or ABS DWV pipe is okay too. The top 20 inches are for the helix and the space at the bottom is for mounting. Alternately, a unique possibility is to seamlessly integrate the antenna with its mast for no visible mounting bracket. Here's the top where the copper coil begins. And here's our hole at the halfway point, those marks that we made, remember? We sent it the line all the way down here, and we've got it sticking out the feed point and feed line pigtail. Next, remove one inch of foil at the lengthwise center of the helix and then drill a three fourths inch hole through the PVC pipe in the gap. The feed coax runs coaxially up through the PVC pipe from the bottom and exits at this hole to connect to the helix. Next, prepare a six foot RG58 or mini eight coax feed line pigtail. Separate the center conductor and shield wires into two individual conductors. Weather proof the ends with heat shrink tubing. Add number six ring terminals for the feed point screws leaving roughly one half inch of the conductors exposed to facilitate a sharp bend at the feed point. Drill and tap the PVC pipe through the helix ends for six 32 by 3 8 inch stainless steel screws and flat washers. Stainless steel metal screws can also be used. It is advisable to use heavier coax, such as RG8, RG213, or LMR400 for the downstream run of the pigtail to the shack to minimize losses.
note of caution. Be sure to connect the coax shield wire to the bottom helix turn and the center conductor to the top turns. If these connections are reversed, tuning will be difficult. The antenna needs a one-to-one -one current choke down just below the helix. You can use a stack of VHF mix ferrite beads on the pigtail inside the PVC mask, or an external six-turn, one-inch ring of bundled coax secured with zip Tune and match. My antenna tuned up at 146 megahertz with a good SWR when trimmed to three and a half helix turns on top and four and a half turns below the feed point. The reason for a non-centered feed point is this. A shortened dipole has a natural center feed point impedance of less than 50 ohms. A one-to-one -one match will be found slightly off-center on either side. To allow for initial adjustment, the 54-inch length of the copper tape is intentionally too long. The initial frequency will be low. One merely removes small amounts until the desired frequency and SWR are achieved. The number of turns on top, compared to the number at the bottom, adjusts the SWR. The total length adjusts the frequency. Consequently, remove or add foil only at the top to adjust the SWR. Add or remove similar amounts simultaneously at both ends to change the frequency. The rule of thumb for trimming antennas is to adjust the SWR first and then the frequency. What have we been doing all these thousands of years?